I'm thinking the first, the recent time when I noticed, hey, I'm doing the itinerant preacher wrong, I think I did them wrong at the beginning too, because this is the second card, and I think at the very beginning, I've auctioned them off as well, so eh, kind of weird. It makes him more valuable to bid on if you know he only moves when you get a card. And that makes a little bit of sense there. A couple more knights available. City rights, that's becoming less valuable. I mean, money is really important in this, uh, in the sense that, you know, you can bid up something that you have that, that, that you can get that's important to you. Um, but for the electorates, for stuff like that, chances are somebody's gonna try to set it up so that you can't get it without fighting a battle. So far, we haven't seen a lot of fighting. People have been staying away from it for the reasons I explained before. Some of it being, you know, not being available, but some of it also being, hey, uh, it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't make sense. Uh, as long as there are options to expand without the fighting, which I guess I did say before. I don't know what I'm reaching for here. Anyway, um, in, in terms of getting the money for the city rights, well, you know, sure, it would be nice to improve your income and it's worth expending money on that. But the threat of it all being taken away militarily by the knight armies or whatever is much more disturbing. And then two of these Reich shots, uh, which are able to actually invade something like this. But of course, if you do that, you're opening it up to someone else. So maybe it's better to go after stuff that's neutral, just as you do with the death die rolls. All right. Uh, I guess bidding starts over here, and I don't know if I can face this. So the bidding sequence, Yellow managed to slip an extra knight in for fairly cheap, which pushed them up to the Master of War position. That gets them to control of three of the electorates. If they can pull another electorate, they win the game. And everybody's kind of like, oh shit now. Um, a little late, the next knight went for way too much, after realizing, geez, well, we gotta get up there. And um, although that one's less important, and now, and actually Yellow probably could have done this on their own. They had a couple of mercenaries in their hand. They could have boosted themselves up there. But you know, I'm, I'm just kind of, uh, I'm feeling the water in this game as it was. Uh, and now there's two of these available. Now the question is, can Yellow take advantage of this? Is there an electorate that we could pretty much grab? Brandenburg, there's a couple of red pieces next to it. That's not gonna be easy to take. And otherwise, we're not really all that close to anything. Um, so positionally, our kind of nice location that it was kind of isolated from the center, but also mainly uh, had a lot of room to expand. It doesn't really have the chance to grab that fourth victory condition space very easily. So all I have is Cologne here. And I got, uh, you know, a couple nearby. But some of those might be ones I already own. Actually, I ought to be careful. Brandenburg's the one I just slapped down. I don't want to take that. Uh, I don't want to take Trier. What about the Palatinate? The Palatinate sounds like a... Eh, falls. Sounds like a good choice, actually. So I'll go into there instead using my Master of War card. But what that means is somebody else could bump me out of that. And, you know, if Brown attacked the falls... Maybe, well, first of all, nobody else really can intervene easily. They've got a preponderance of force in the area. But other people also wouldn't be as interested in stopping them because that would bump one of these into either Trier or Brandenburg, both of which are closer to yellow and therefore more easily can become 
Yellow's fourth choice. So there's some interesting stuff going on here. I gotta think very hard about some of these cards. I don't think I was thinking enough about that first night because I didn't realize it would bump someone, yeah, well, it would bump either yellow or brown into what's essentially a victory point card. Now, again, you know, yellow can boost their way back up and get more knights very easily. There's also mistakes in the cards. Uh, there's been a death of the Lord, you may, uh, or after the death of the Lord, you may take the following, you may take part in the following auction. See rule 9.4. Well, there is no 9.4, goes from 9.0 to 10.0, but there is an 8.4 about death of the Lord. So it's a minor mistake, but still, you know. Looking at the cards, trying to figure out, hey, what can I do here? Um... I don't have a way to force Brandenburg, but I can force that either, well, no. I can force that some electorate goes, but Brandenburg's the only one I can intervene in. And that's kind of painful. Now, if the emperor dies at this point, I'm sitting on 5, 10, 15, 20 points to 10 for the next uh, competition. So I will win the game if I can get the Emperor to die, or if the Emperor dies. So I'm sitting in a position that's guaranteed, if no one does anything, yeah, nice, um, to fall into a victory. So everybody's got to do something about me. It would be nice if I could hurry it along, winning, that is, but I don't see an easy way to, do, to get that fourth electorate assured. Brown just won a right of invasion, and what's not clear on this card, so the card says, select a fiefdom if now, that is now affected by the uh, Reichsfahrt, and all additional, all adjacent forces can now interact without, uh, attack without beating, without breaking the Reichsfried. Okay, great. Well, now, I'm assuming, like in the other case where this happens after the death of the emperor, that other people can still throw into it and defend that territory, as it were. Anyway, Brown won the bid on it fairly cheaply for 60 bucks, and they've got a little area they could easily take. They've got some others they could take, too, which maybe uh, I'll go for. I, I haven't made my decision yet. But what's not clear on here is whether or not I can go for an electorate. Another card says select a fief, not an electorate. On the other hand, there seems to be a distinguishment between actual fiefs and electorates in certain cases. Uh, and I just don't know. Because obviously what I'd love to do is just go in and take the falls. I think that's, uh, I think that's not allowed in general. When you get a death of a lord, if you want an electorate, you have to draw it random. I don't think you can just go into an electorate in this way. But damned if I know, again, you know, you're going to have to house rule this, I think. I'll search some more and see if there's anything. But, jeez. Interesting thing is the place where you're not allowed to is that you can announce a feud after the emperor. <sighs> of course, what's weird here is these attacks are disturbing the Reichsfried and all territories from which a feud starts fall under the ban. So that would actually cause a problem. This does not. <sighs> and falling under the ban just means other people can attack them then. For when, for how long, you know? Uh, and then the craziest thing, if a player who starts a feud survives this war, he can just take the territory. So it's handled in a very, very different sort of fashion. So I just don't know, <laughs> which isn't shocking. Um, I can't find anything in the rules one way or another that says I can't just, or I can, just I don't want to color it one way or another because I kind of don't think I should just be able to start a feud with an electorate and grab it. 
that would mean that if yellow won one of these with their numerical superiority, well, they don't have it, but they have it with the knight cards. So they can end the game here if they take Brandenburg. I, you know, I, I just don't fucking know. For kind of silly reasons, I'm deciding that, yes, I can. First of all, there's no, no reason I cannot that's written into it. Now, do I want to? Is Green willing to allow Brown to go into the Rhine's fall? Uh, I don't know. Green says, you know, no, I know you're taking a territory away from Yellow, but it's not really. They're going to be able to grab Trier uh, because they're getting it off of one of their special cards. So you're not really taking anything away from them. So I'm not really in favor of this. Okay, but what it does mean, and one of the biggest reasons that I'm doing this, is that Yellow can essentially win the game, assuming they have the most money to bid for this next card, because then they can just declare an attack on Brandenburg. Now, that's not obvious to anyone else except them, where there are a handful of cards that will help them take it. We'll see how it all plays out. Other people will try to stop them, and maybe it's not assured. Um, but I think it does mean that Brown is going to advance into a safe territory, one where nobody is going to oppose them. Those safe territories are kind of interesting. Um, this Lutic here, which says BM, I don't know if that means it's a bishopric. Uh, I don't think so. Well, maybe. These all say BM. Or something. I don't know if that's a B. <laughs> you know. But, um... Uh, Yeah, this one is too. I, I bet you, I bet you that's that's the easy way to see that they're bishoprics. Of course, the rules nothing helps highlight that. And there's lots of these. It's not like the only thing. This hat says gift. This says hism. Uh, you know, so you just look at that and say, okay, it's something, something or other. Um, whatever the actual. So this is probably graft. Uh, it seems a little low for Tyrol. Uh, I don't know what hism is, but whatever. They probably stand for something uh, in terms of the type of title that's there, and BM probably stands for bowel movement or bishopric or something. Uh, I forgot to play my robber knight that I wanted to play on yellow. Hey, too late now. I had that actually face up so I would remember, but I just couldn't face playing this anymore last night. We've got that one last card to go, but you know what? Before that's played, well, I'll actually let them play it out, but I'm gonna try to uh, boost the number of war points I have with brown. That's their thought, is that they can prevent yellow, uh, they can strip an electorate away from yellow. So we're not gonna have that four electorate victory. Of course, what I don't know is that yellow has two mercenaries themselves. So things are getting a little exciting here, even though, you know, because it is obvious that yellow's about to win. Well, somebody has to step up and bite the bullet and bid them up. Well, what players don't know is how much money they have. Now they could talk about that, I guess. But what ended up happening was a number of people jumped in, but only red stayed in with big money. And they went up to 270, all their cash. They didn't win but they did force yellow so that they only have less than a hundred bucks so they can't activate both their mercenaries. I think blue has over 300. They could have actually won the bid. Blue didn't want it that badly though. Uh, however, knowing that the game is likely over means it's not such a good thing, right? <laughs> and they can't jump back in when they find out that red's out of cash. So this card goes over to yellow. I'll put a little yellow thing here. Yellow is going to declare Brandenburg. And we have a few things here. We have, we'll hold the crusade for a moment. 
Although we can't play this once combat starts, but we can play this right at the beginning of combat. So I think what we have to do is we have to play the Crusade on red. And we're going to knock out this army, this knight army. And that takes two knights away from red. Um, and then while we're at it, we'll play this mercenary, which costs us our 50 bucks. And we get our own knight, which we'll put here, so we have a large army. We can't play the second mercenary because we don't have the cash anymore. Uh, we do up our knight value to 10. Okay. The game ends immediately if someone wins it. So I think this is the point at which Brown has to say, hey, you're not getting what you think. So they're going to play two mercenaries for a hundred bucks and this is why the game's not going to end here. They had the hundred bucks, I think I just threw it in. And they get two knights. Now note that yellow had to have a lord to even make this attack valid. Uh, two knights which goes to Four. And I'm assuming this is a plus 10. It doesn't look at all like that, but it doesn't make sense if it's not. That track has real problems compared to some of the other tracks. I, I don't know what's going on with that. I'll put a knight here. I like spreading them out because of the Crusades, but also it, it allows me to focus my strength. But Here's the thing, I kind of, well, we'll reorganize. I kind of want to put a lot of effort into the falls there. But I think I've got enough troops right on the falls that I can probably win fights. I'm going to I'm gonna actually dump one guy, one more guy here, in case an Elector dies and I get the falls somehow. It is one of the open ones. Uh, and Trier is as well. So, you know, I'm in a position where I can... Grab one of the couple of uh, those. Now I moved this forward, and you can see the track doesn't look. It doesn't look like I'm ahead on the track terribly much, but that gives me the Master of War card, which is 20 bucks of Yellow's income, 20 bucks for my income. Yeah, this is what's annoying. I get this. Yellow loses one of their electorates. Do they want to lose the Falls, or do they want to lose, I think that's Bohemia. The Falls is closer. I'm going to give that up with this. And then Brown gets to choose an electorate. And we'll take Brandenburg for now, just in case it doesn't fall. If it does fall, we have to pick a different one. Um, I believe the Master of War actually can trump, and here's the other problem. These aren't associated with a particular chit, so if you have a couple of these cards, it's not clear who you can bump out of where, but you could bump one of them, and then if he has a higher ranking one, he could bump another. So, for example, if I had all three here, if I had Faith here as well as Trade, and it just and war had just handed off. I guess trade could be bumped, but then faith could bump the war or something like that. Uh, as it stands, though, trade is the weakest. So do I want to take Bohemia? Not terribly. It really doesn't make much difference. I don't think you can do you can make those transfers though unless they're forced. Uh, which is to say, now that I've picked Brandenburg, I can't just move this unless something new happens. Um, so now, Red is the one person who can intervene here. He doesn't have any cards. I should look at everybody else's cards and see if they have anything. Green has a mercenary, but he's not on the border of Brandenburg. Brown has a card he wish he had played earlier. 
I have a peasant uprising here with gray. I would like to reduce yellow's chances. I'm going to play that to get rid of this mercenary. And that drops him another point. Not that it matters terribly much. It looks like Brandenburg's going to probably be successful. This only works on your own stuff, it looks like. And the bitch in the woods isn't going to help. Okay. So now I get to declare my attack and these guys are going in. And now does red want to intervene? <sighs> if I succeed, I don't get anything. And the game is not over. And my chances of success aren't very good because it's just going to be knights versus knights. On a 1 in 6, I'll go in, but I think I'm just sacrificing myself if I do. I don't want to. I'm the guy who bit him up. I've done my part. Which means Brandenburg now swings over. He gets the real side of this in Brandenburg, which boots him. And he has to choose something. Well, he'll choose Bohemia since he has the higher one. And he'll choose... It doesn't really matter. The Palatinate there. Um, I probably want to throw a knight into Brandenburg. Just in case something else is going to happen this turn. This card has been resolved. And... We're on the fate phase. This all can probably be resolved much more quickly once you're kind of used to the game a little bit more. But as of right now, I have to struggle my way through trying to figure out, hey, what's happening where. Um, nothing really gives you the ability to project your power other than armies, so. And I gotta dig up the Brandenburg card and increase his income by 50. Uh, plus, if he has any trade, which it does not look like he has, you got to be careful. Make sure that a city intervenes, that you don't have like a two-coin trade spot or something like that. Look at how Brandenburg just kind of collapsed there because nobody would support them. That's what I find really hard to believe uh, with this system. At least Wallenstein, which is a game that I kind of compare to this, much, much more easily played. But honestly, in terms of effect, in terms of historical accuracy or whatever, it's on the same level as this, right? Uh, but it's more fun and, and easier to play. It just isn't the, quite the same topic, but um, being more towards the 30 being the 30 years war side rather than being more towards. Yeah, it is the Thirty Years' War as opposed to this more uh, earlier period, uh, you know, where the formation of the, the great imperial families, you know, and the, the consolidation of the Habsburgs is, is really what this is representing instead. <sighs> or maybe an earlier period than that. Maybe it's the Hohenstaufens. Who knows? But... Certainly by the time of, of the Habsburg uh, accession to the imperial throne, it, it wasn't really the case that a couple of these smaller states could get together and take over Brandenburg for themselves. Uh, the Biggies, the Saxons, Brandenburg, the, the electors. And by the way, if Bohemia is an electorate, we're fairly late in history. I think we may be beyond the Hohenstaufen period, but my... My memory is very sketchy about this kind of stuff. Uh, I have trouble putting together a list of the kings of England in order, and they're all numbered, right? <laughs> so, and what, what, basically what I'm saying is that the electorates, for the most part, were fairly potent states that you couldn't just threaten in... You know, the card gives you the right to start a feud, but the military capabilities of these states should probably be greater than they're represented as. And to tell you the truth, so should all the minor states. They should all have some kind of defensive force. Of course, you could just 
you know, uh, you could house rule that, but you got to be careful because the victory conditions of the game are designed around someone um, kind of taking, uh, being able to reach that four electorates within a certain amount of time. And this card would become very questionable. I mean, if it's a feud with Brandenburg that happened, it's not like a succession crisis. The succession crisis, I have a lot less trouble with the player being able to put their own pawn into place. Of course, here's the problem with that, uh, but it's already covered in the game, which is, hey, okay, you got your pawn in place, but will he stay your pawn once he's in charge of Brandenburg? That there's no real answer for, but the thing that there is an answer for is, um, what happens when he dies? Well, when he dies, you have now uh, a right of succession and other people can play cards to try to get it. And that's really, really all that happens there. Um, anyway. In a situation where uh, we had a couple of births, nothing could be done about those, but blue picked a Death of a Lord, they decide to do Bavaria here. Uh, they have cards that would allow them to slip into something that maybe they would have more trouble getting to, but when you can take a freebie that's valuable to you, it has a couple of trade routes going into his territories, to me there's no reason not to do that. Now this isn't a freebie though, I, I can lie there. Um, I have a knight and a mercenary, and green's got a mercenary. Green could contest this, and basically these generally go for 10 because they're uncontested. This would be 20, and then I'd pay 50 to get a mercenary. I'd have two mercs. I'd be at a disadvantage overall, so I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to let blue ease their way in. Um, but that's the kind of decision that's going on. So, you know, if yellow were expanding into a risky area, of course, yellow doesn't have this problem they're all back here except for you know when they're going for electorates now uh, but if yellow were expanding into a risk area maybe somebody would contest that but for green to contest blue doesn't seem like that great a, a deal uh, like I said though blue actually could have played a card which just automatically gave it to them and they're holding five cards which means on their next card draw they're going to have to play something or discard something we have our first contested inheritance Red put up Gorlitz. It's here. They have the advantage. They have knights. Gray has just men at arms. Red has no cards that can really help them here. Um, if they had a had had a bishop, uh, a, a, a priest ready to succeed somewhere, that would have been useful. The right of succession. I could have guaranteed my entry there, but I'd rather use that against yellow to try to. Uh, prop my way into a yellow territory. If yellow was out of cash, which I wouldn't of course know, um, I could have like make it a challenge on something like, not Brandenburg, but something like this. But I don't have the force to grab it from him if he can bid on it. Um, so, you know, since you don't know how much cash somebody has, even though he spent a lot, I'm not willing to take that risk. But Gray says, you know what, I'm going to bid on this. I have less force. I only have an infantry. I have no cards to back it up, really. But I'm going in. Now, Red could up their bid. There's a slight advantage to the defense, I believe. Uh, well... If there was terrain there. Otherwise, I don't think that there's really anything that's going to help there. So, I don't see putting extra money in. We're going to let Gray win this. Which means Gray actually takes this over with one of their people. Pays the 20 bucks. Red doesn't pay anything, but they're committed or they're, they're in the auction, so they're allowed to go in. Now this is where I say, hey, you know, that money probably was actually spent, but whatever. So Gray, in order to protect themselves, can drop an infantry in there. And now Red can declare an attack with the knight. And at this point, 
I guess we pull out the combat chart. And, well, I think it's fives and sixes hit, but we're going to have to reread the combat rolls, which are, of course, as I've complained often, in the concepts, which is just a stupid place for them. I wonder where in there. All right, I'm going to need hands, which I don't have while I'm videoing. So here we are. If anybody else was nearby, they could throw into this. Uh, if anybody had any cards they wanted to play, they could play them. And this this is where, you know, maybe there'd be a bluffing factor in play here, where, you know, gray wouldn't go in because red had the card and there you know, it ha has cards and they're clearly, you know, making a challenge to gray possible. But gray feels like, uh, we're just so far behind on the income and everything else. We're not gonna have a shot at this. Even if it means picking on someone who's got a border with yellow and could conceivably be, you know, a thorn in yellow's side and prevent the game from being lost, we have to pat our own nest a little bit here. And this is all we have. We don't have any extraneous territory kicking around like yellow does or red does back here. Uh, we, no, wait, we do have this. So, okay, I lied. All right. Um, so people could discard cards and buy mercenaries, though. And that sounds like a pretty good deal. Unfortunately, red has two cards. Gray only has one. So gray's going to pay their 80 bucks and get themselves another mercenary. And red's also going to play this game. And probably this wouldn't have happened if this was the case. Red's going to pay 160 Ah, jeez. I have the advantage already, and I really don't want to give up either of these cards, but I lose the advantage if I don't give up at least one of them. So I'm going to keep the uh, Curia one, but I'm going to throw the Rite of Succession, and that is only 80 bucks for one mercenary to get me into there. And now we set up starting from the one box and there we are all right and now we've got our pairs built uh, we're looking for hits which if I recall are fives and sixes Okay, it's two dice. A roll of, no, it's two dice. A roll of seven or more is one hit, twelve or more is two hits. Okay. So we'll do the first battle, the first fight here. And the attacker is not attacking a castle. There's no defensive bonuses here. It's a knight versus mercenary, so that's plus one and minus one. So red, and I should have different colored dice for this game. Red rolls a 10, 11. That's a hit. And gray rolls an 8, which is also a hit. So both sides take a hit. And yeah, we use these big blocks for our hits. Joy. And now we can't see what the unit under is and whatever. All right, here it's straight up even. Red misses, and gray gets a hit. All right. Well, once you've already, you know, spent the effort here, it's hard to withdraw. And in fact, this is almost an even fight. Red's a little behind. And now we throw this all around because it's not a regular rule book. I don't know how much better the regular rule book would be. Uh, all right, well, that doesn't help. So, uh, now each side is allowed to withdraw their forces. They don't have to withdraw all of them either. Uh, they could 
just pull out some of their troops that they're afraid of getting lost. But you know, it's the territory we're fighting over. That's worth a lot. I don't know about the 80 bucks uh, for the mercenary. That's also worth something. Um, so I think both sides are gonna stick around. They don't have to. And now you could reorganize, but the rules for that are kind of vague because you're reorganizing, I guess, kind of based on the initial organization, which means this knight has to be here, this infantry has to be here. The question might be these hit units here. Uh, and I guess I could swap them out. I'm not actually, I'm not actually sure I do have an advantage. It actually looks like an even fight. Okay, so red's attacking with a knight, which is plus one, but it's also minus one due to being injured, but not against, only if it's fighting against a non-injured unit. Okay, so it's still that plus one, uh, minus one for red to gray. And we get a six. And Gray gets a 10. That's a second hit on the knight, so we can get rid of this big block. And now we put this in play. Now, what does that mean in terms of the knight? That doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot. It's still a wounded unit. It's just knights have a lot of resilience. If I get a third hit, I capture the knight, and then Gray can work out some kind of deal to get it back into Red's hands. Over here, Red's at a minus one. And they miss, and Gray's at a plus one, and they hit twice, which is enough to kill this. If it had been a knight, it would be captured. And there goes one of these stupid blocks. Now Red's position looks a lot uglier, because not only do I have two hits and another hit gets my knight out of there, Gray can do this, which will give him a supporting unit, which is an extra bonus, uh, so gray will essentially be at plus one. There's no penalty for supporting units on the other guy's side. But, so it'll be knight against infantry, but wounded against unwounded, which all cancels out. But gray will be at a plus one. I don't think red's willing to lose another piece here, so they're going to abandon their fight. And I guess they just go home. This actually stays here in case there's another round of combat, and these stay here. It is possible that some other combat could be created here. Yellow and green have yet to go. It gets more and more crowded. It's hard to make deaths of a noble to be as effective as you know it was when you have open spaces. Of course, yellow has their advantage back here, and maybe some others do. But at this point, Green drew, got that die roll. They're gonna go with Nuremberg. Breslau, well, sure, there's a hit unit, but there's two infantry there. Plus, I don't have troops that can intervene there, so even though that's off to the edges of my empire or territory, I can't do anything about it. I could do something like Osterreich, but that doesn't help me unless I have a right of succession card, which I don't. So I can't go intervene in the blue territory there. Um, I could go for an electorate, but I don't have, well, I do have 200 bucks, and maybe nobody else near me does, but maybe Bohemia doesn't come up, right? Yeah, it's, it would be a high-risk option, but Nuremberg doesn't look like a high-risk. I have an infantry and a knight there. The only other things that are adjacent are red and gray. Now, gray has a knight, but I also have a mercenary. So I have essentially an edge of two mercenaries on one player. I don't see either red or gray operating against me. Oh, and I have my itinerant preacher. I think he only works in defense, though. Um, so it seems like a worthy goal, and I'll put my 10 buck bid, and we'll see if anybody wants to intervene but it looks like a bad option to me. Nobody knows that I have that mercenary available. Oh shit, you know what? We lost some troops, right? 
and gain some troops, which means these numbers are all wrong. This is the problem I had with dominant species and other games that have these counter tracks with rapidly changing things. It's one thing to have a counter track in something, you know, uh, an accounting track in something where people have simple turns um, and things are flushed into the counter tracks in a reasonable fashion. So for example, power grid. Hey, you know, I bought some of those, they're removed. It's very clear what's going on. After the Holocaust, I had to do all this paperwork. It's not hard to remember uh, to, to move those counters. But when the games are kind of supposed to be fast paced like this, and power grid is too, but it has actual commodities sitting on the grids. So when you take them off, they change the, uh, they change the value on the on the tracks. Well here, this is where the action's going, but I've got to reflect it here. And this has always been a problem for me in a lot of these Euro designs, is that I lose track of what's supposed to be on here. Um, I'll do a recount of these guys because I don't want to do a full recount. So that's three, it looks like red's at four. Okay, they're right somehow. And gray is at two, four, five, six. And somehow they're right as well. I have no idea how that happened. Let's make gray be at seven. <laughs> Let's make red be at five. Okay, so it didn't actually happen. That's how it happened. But that's one of uh, the problems is that I'm not gonna be able to keep those tracks up to date. And th I don't think that's just a solo play thing. I can see those suckers getting out of whack and, and out of alignment just regularly. Anyway, back to this situation. I don't think anybody wants to go in. Red sure the hell doesn't. The big thing is these guys already fought a battle so they may have used their cards up. And gray is not going to either, which means, <laughs> gotta check that I didn't screw up and uh, put a bit in that I couldn't, I'm gonna get Nuremberg. And in terms of scoring, Nuremberg's worth a quick 10 bucks. And then it's worth another 10 because of connectivity. So I get 10 in trade and that comes to here. And hey, maybe these are close to right at least, right? <laughs> All right. And that's gonna put us to do, 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 do. The stupid action card whale. One way to beat up on the clear leader, yellow in this case, is to make sure he has no children. Um, they've been being smothered in the crib recently. <laughs> uh, I redid the counting and everybody was a little bit off or a lot of people were a little bit off. I don't have any assurance in my mind that I've got the counting correct anyway after redoing it just because so someplace like blue, where I'm counting up how many points that they get off trade, it's 10, okay, to there, 20, 30, from here to here, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 in trade, well, I've got them marked at 100, why do I have them more, I, you know, I don't know, now I recount and do it again, and that, and I, I'm assuming that 100's correct because I probably didn't get it right, you know, doing it just as I did it right now. But now I'm all uncertain about that as well. And then, and blue is particularly bad for the trade routes, so it's yellow anywhere where you have a lot of trade routes, and especially these ones that kind of, these crossroads that look really weird. Uh, but then on top of that, okay, the next thing is you can count up all the numbers on the cards, and that makes it easier, but that's not enough because you have to count your relics and your monasteries as well. And, uh... <laughs> It's just so obnoxious, uh, the amount of effort that has to go into uh, resettling these tracks. And the wooden blocks and such not, the way that they all kind of blend together, especially the way that these look kind of gray, uh, causes just more of a headache. And you know, I've gone over all this before, but now that I experienced it, I'm saying, ah, oh, geez, I don't think I want to do that again. I'll just count on having gotten everything right for the whole game, <laughs> which I know I can't do. 
but I also know that I can't do the recounts with any, any likelihood of success. Anyway, we've moved the turn marker and uh, we're ready to start another turn. Blue had an interesting card that allowed them, they have five cards in their hand, so they drew one, had to play one. Well, they played it, it allowed them to look in Yellow's hand and draw one. Uh, they ended up taking a mercenary and building that, now fortifying here in Nassau, so that's probably not gonna fall for them. But their other choice was a more valuable card, the Rite of Succession, but had they drawn that, they would have to discard a card. Now, they could have discarded for an 80 buck mercenary. It probably would have been a better move. Uh, because the Rite of Succession is actually a really useful card, but they chose to just abandon that in place instead. I think it's over. We have a Death of the Emperor event. There's not a lot of neutral space, which means he's sitting on 15, 16, 17 for Master of Trade. Uh, he should have Master of War kicked in here too. I can't find it. Somebody else take that bat. Uh, does somebody else have that? And he should. Yeah, it's down here in Brown's hands. In Brown's hands? How can that be? Okay, so that comes to uh, 15, 20, I think. Again, it's not really clear. Uh, when we look at the election of the emperor, what I'm saying is not really clear is these may not be actual electors. Like they may not actually give you the elector. They may give you like three points of an elector or something like that. I'm not sure. So let's see how this is written. Uh, electors controlled by a player vote for that elector. If an elector is influenced by a master card, he must vote for the owner of the master card. Now count your votes together. Now count your votes and add together all glory points. Well, gosh, um, so each elector has votes, but they also have a glory. So, you know, I'm not really sure if he's got five points, 10 points of glory and three votes, which comes out to 13 versus what, one or six? You know, I, I don't know. They do give an example here. So one neutral vote, uh, master of war, three glory points, okay. Uh, one vote elector plus one neutral vote, two glory points, comes to seven glory points. What the fuck? Uh, three votes elector, 15 glory points, okay. One vote elector, five glory points, yellow wins. So, it looks as though maybe you don't get to score these as the elector as well. The elector is not actually voting for you. I don't know what the votes are worth in this case. Let's see if another example helps us. One vote elector, one vote elector plus one neutral vote. Okay, well, how many electors do we have here? Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five of the seven electors, so maybe that counts as an elector. <clears throat> yeah, neutral vote through the possession of a master card as long as they're neutral electorates. So I think what happens is these don't count for shit if all the electorates are really filled, but they only count for their glory, i.e. a partial electorate vote. Now, what the value of the non players has is kind of not clear either. So for example, if we see here, okay, so here's a neutral player example. Vote elector five, vote elector plus a neutral. So we've got three of the votes. Neutral player, well, we don't know about that. Two neutral votes, so that gets us to five, and it looks like the other two are the, uh, the neutral player and they get the glory for that. So what I'm seeing here, which is not quite what I expected. I thought these points got added to the electoral point, uh, to the points from the electors. So I thought I was sitting on 20 points. The actuality is I'm sitting on 10, uh, five plus three plus two. But everyone else has five, including the neutral player, which means yellow's gonna win unless somebody's got a card that can 
do something, which I think the answer is they do not, but we'll see. But he can do something. Blue. Now, here we come to a timing problem. Blue has five cards. Boom! I spend four, uh, 400 bucks. And that'll get me five knights. Which will push this up. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, I'm in the lead. Okay. So now, assuming I had the counter mix. Two, three. Of course... I'll put these here. We'll think about them in a moment. Because income's just been handed out. Okay, but green, or yellow here, actually has two cards. Hey, that's 160 bucks. I'll buy two knights. That puts me up there as well. This is really kind of a goofy way to end things, right? <clears throat> But, and again, I'm not sure because of the way they describe owning electors or controlling them or whatever it is they're talking about. I don't know, you know, how much we can trust the terminology in this game for anything. But, oh no, Brown has the shit. Okay, Brown does have the Master of War, which means maybe there are two actual electors here. Yeah, yellow has two actual electors. So nobody's going to be able to steal that. Those cards should be back in people's hands. Nobody's going to be able to take Master of Trade away. Uh, the only thing that really could have been up for, for auction was these. Um, everything else, you're not going to be able to throw down a bunch of cards and get anything, and there's nothing that's going to end it. So, yellow does indeed win, but <laughs> you can see how kind of goofy the end game could get if it relies on this. Brown, see, I thought brown was low. No, they're very high because uh, this counter's flipped over and is on the, uh, the plus five side or something, but it's, you know, I'm doing this plus 10. Or maybe it's plus 10 and you just can't read it. That would not be odd for this game. So we got the uh, result that I think we could have predicted when we set up the cards at the beginning of the game, which is, yeah, yellow, yellow is just ahead. Um, they, they had a lot of room to expand. There really wasn't anything anybody was capable of doing to really hurt them too much from the very beginning of the game. Flawed not? Well, I don't know. You know, if it's a Euro or an AT style game, yeah, that would really suck. If it's meant to be more of like, uh, not really a, a war game, but something more of an experiential game, say like uh, Empires of the Middle Ages, which I got kicking around somewhere here. Um, you know, you can say, well, you know, if there had been a coalition like that, I, I mean, it really, that, that could make sense or whatever. The problem is the game feels more like a Euro or an AT style game, and it actually feels mostly like a Euro. Uh, we'll have some of those when I, when I touch on... Uh, on my review of this, but overall, I, I definitely see this uh, that there's a lot of luck in this thing, and it's a weird sort of luck, you know. I mean, it's like, oh look, you know, you're starting, you're starting territories. It's kind of, um, I guess, if if you played Risk and you dealt out the cards at the beginning for where people started, and then maybe didn't really like, you know, have any ability to reinforce or anything, because that's really kind of what it feels like, <laughs> is if, you, if you're able to set up, you know, if you have a good setup to begin with, boom, you get some golden advantages for expansion. And he had continuing advantages coming forward. You know, uh, if, if, we're, if this game could have been played on longer, yellow still had a lot of power 
that they could have expanded into, or a lot of territory they could have expanded into to increase their wealth, etc. On the other hand, I cheated uh, on the bids for electorates, I think. I think at least one or two of them went for less than they should have. Does that, you know, maybe the game would have lasted a little longer, but it looked pretty hard for yellow to be overcome. And, you know, once you are able to neutralize the neutral deck of electors, as it were, somebody's going to win, and it's going to be whoever's doing the best. And, you know, that's kind of the heart of what I find difficult about the game, is that I just won with the support of three electors. Uh, what I would want is for these players to be able to support the neutral elector and say, no, you didn't. You know, but then that gets rid of one of the victory conditions, which is the as soon as you get four electors. Now, the question of whether or not you control an elector or how you you know, what constitutes control of an elector, whether this card holding this and, you know, we could look at the words for definition. Um, that might help but I wouldn't put all my trust in it that that's what the designer intended. That may be the best that there is. <laughs> uh, so electoral votes after getting possession of an electorate. Okay, that's possession. The word that's used uh, in the victory conditions, I believe, is control an electorate, not possession. Which, you know, again, do we know that that meant? So direct vote through owning the appropriate territory and having an information marker on the electoral board. Oh, that's the elector. No. That's that. Okay. That's for the vote, the winning. If one player is elected to the emperor after the election, the game ends immediately. So we don't get to fight, you know, over the territory. We don't get to cause a feud. And we wouldn't be able to take an electorate anyway. Um, the game ends in one of two ways. During the game, the emperor will be deposed as soon as a player controls four electors, not owns. Now, if we take a look at the master cards, as soon as you uh, receive one, you place an electoral vote marker on the elector board. It has to be an electorate which is not owned by another player, owned, not control. The player late, if... Uh, And it doesn't look to me like the word control is associated with these either. <laughs> it's an undefined term that's just kicking around. And that's where the, the heart of the problem comes. Uh, owned seems to be well defined. Controlled might mean these cards or it might be just um, a synonym for owned. And damned if I know, right? I don't know if it makes much difference to tell you the truth, because if you have four of the electorates uh, under your voting influence, if some of them are neutral, but they're under your voting influence, I think you're going to end up with the most points anyway. Uh, let's see. So worst case scenario, you've got these masters, which add up to nine points plus five for an electorate which puts you to 14, which is less than, yeah, nine points plus five for an electorate, right? Five, nine, yeah, to 14, which is actually less than the electoral vote of three controlled pro, uh, electorates. So there is a reason to think that it doesn't go that way. Regardless, however you want to look at it, because the emperor died, and the election does go to yellow. We don't we don't have that situation, but we're trying to discern what the, you know uh, the rules as written are meant to represent. And again, you know that's largely a fruitless task with this game, I think. But there is a strong uh, a strong argument on that basis, I think, for own and control being synonyms for one another because it would be possible to win the election with only three of the electorates if the opposing player had these three cards and owned one of them. 
Uh, on the other hand, maybe this is meant to defeat that. You know? I don't know. All right, let's send this crap up. But, yeah, I think the takeaway in terms of play is uh, the an asymmetrical start can vastly affect one player's you know, position throughout the game, and there just isn't enough capability to gang up on people. I like that there's not that much capability to gang up, and I'll tell you why. Because too many games have this very loose type of thing. Eh, you can attack whoever you want. You can do whatever you want. And very, very seldomly was that the case. Uh, and I think the feud cards handled those cases well enough. You don't usually have a Frederick the Great walking in and taking Silesia. Later era, but whatever. Still within the Empire, right? Alright, let's send this up.